guy. How's the hair looking? This bike, since it is internally routed, I shouldn't have removed the housing. Why well, I removed it, I pulled it through, I wasn't thinking about it. I need to have something to <laughs> use, right? Internally routed frame. Oh no. And then you make the mistake of pulling the previous uh, housing out of there. I know it. Then this yeah, happens. Pull that out there. I don't know why I pulled out. No, I should be saying. Oh, I got it. Get off my hand. How many loads? I don't want to hear about tangles, okay? <laughs> Wolf Tick Nation. Thank you guys for tuning into once again a very rad Wolf Tick Videos episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. I don't know rad. Oh, it's rad. It's going to be wicked. We're not today. doing we're not we're not we're not doing the old 80s. We're not BMX doing an old 80s stuff. BMX bike. So right. all that. This is going to be a sweet episode. We are glad you guys are back because we've been dealing with a whole bunch of brake issues and stuff here recently. A lot okay? of brake stuff. Now we have ordered some pads for those last brakes. Yes. If you guys missed that episode, go back. Uh, we've got some cool brake yeah, pads coming. You use the ones just to show people if it was going to grab or not off of that other brake. What's those other brakes? We'll talk about that on the other video. I know, but the, the point, well, what I'm saying is, if everyone started getting all upset thinking that you were going to use those, you thought you were too for a second, and I put the kibosh on that. You put the we're kibosh on it. That. We've got some new brake pads coming for uh, Project uh, Cheech. Alrighty, so everybody yeah. out there, make sure your notifications turn on if you guys watch that last episode. Semi metallic. Yeah, I if you ain't watched it, uh, make sure you tune in for when we do that video, okay? Yeah. But today's video. If you uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. If you guys have noticed, There's another elephant. Um, I've got the mullet on today. Okay. I do this periodically throughout, uh, you know, throughout different months and stuff like that. Sometimes uh, you randomly. The other day you had that on and nothing else. This, it was it. Okay, it was a photo shoot. Now, what we are going to be doing on today's episode, we are working on everybody's favorite bike. The Kent Travel. Alrighty. Now, it is a mullet bike because our boy old uh, Chuck U, baby, Mobile. he hooked us up with the Hope Chuck Wheel U. Set or the Hope Hubs. He built the whole wheel set himself and he sent us uh, the, the wheel, wheel set to special. basically. It's very special wheel set. He sent us it for the Travel because remember, guys, this bike and is then a 29 And he came and rode the heck out of it. Yeah. This bike is a 29er, yeah. and um, well, it was a little of. it was a little big for me. So we got the 27.5 in the rear and the 29 in the back. I love the way it feels. Alrighty, and I'm five five. You just said 27.5 in the rear and 29 in the back. So on today's episode, we are going to be installing some four pot, four piston brakes back here. We got from our boy, old Raxman, got my butt just dropped. That's right. They are the Raxman. Pro four piston um, hydraulic brakes. We're gonna be doing the install on it today. It's gonna be a very interesting episode. Do we have all the episode. adapters we need if we go those bigger roads? I think we've got a 203 and a 180 uh, for the front and rear, and um, I'm gonna have to see if we've got the the adapters. But we'll get to that on today's episode, okay? If so we're gonna not, be installing we'll them, do. and then on a later episode, you guys might you know might be the next episode we will be doing a real-time review that's the internal routing this is a brake review oh so we'll have to skip the internal part for now we're gonna skip the internal part for now because it is internal on the rear yes. i forgot so what we'll do is we'll put it on the mole veil we'll test it on the mole veil we'll zip tie it zip tie it yeah and then it's temporary and then after we're done we'll bleed we'll, we'll cut it put it we'll through, do all that because here at wolf tick videos we are big firm believers on if you guys are to buy this product yeah. right whatever we're what, trying what do you out, expect out of the package what do you guys expect out of the package all right Best we can so get. guys wolf tick nation please hit that like button right hit that subscribe button if you ain't a part of the wolf tick nation i'm gonna do a little bit of this uh little cigar little action. cigar action all the way from the uh Cayman, Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands. So uh, he's going to be smoking a cigar. I've got some new things I want to do with these brakes and not just show you guys. I kind of want to fill them out a little bit, okay? So guys, without further ado, let's get to the Kent Travel, the Molevel as we call it here at Wooltick Videos, and uh, let's check out these brakes. Alright guys, one thing I want to talk to you guys about 
is the internal routing on this bike before we get started, okay? Put on the bike stand, and then I started thinking, hey, we got a friggin' awesome Park Tools bike stand Big Brother Kevin H hooked us up with, right? Work all these angles and all that. And I'm gonna show you guys a close-up down here by the bottom bracket. Something that bothered me when people started commenting about a video we did a while back was the Ascension, mm -hmm. uh, the sauce. Uh, it was a Target um, internally routed bike, and that was like, holy crap, I think that was our first internally routed bike, right? Everybody was hating on it because of the design of the Ascension, uh -huh. and I want to ask you guys, is this a properly inter internally routed frame, okay? I just wanted to get you guys' opinions uh, because it looks very similar to the Ascension. The Ascension was a, pretty much a flat piece of metal yeah, with kind of two little tack welds. This one here is pretty much some welds and then they've drilled out a little quarter size portion of it and then put some hose through it. So I want you guys to be the judge. Let us know in the comments. Well, and the Ascension, in all fairness, has been abused and it has held up just fine. So I don't know. I think people were saying, oh, it was a design flaw or whatever. But I mean, if this is the same way, I never hear anybody saying that about this bike. Yeah, it's very similar. It's a little different, but it's well, pretty much the same design. Yeah, the only difference. You have to look at it. Well, look, the Ascension is basically a flat piece of metal, mm -hmm. and then the cables are. Well, they're, they're going to argue that this one has some welding on this end here that covers a little more. I think that's yeah. You know. So anyway, I just want to show you guys that internal routing, uh, the way that that's routed. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at these rotors, and uh, while Wolfman tries to figure his chair out over there. <laughs> He's having probably He's been drinking I've tonight. I've been drinking. All right, guys. So the rotors, we will be cleaning these with the isopropyl uh, 91%. You like saying isopropyl, I do. You? Yeah, so these are the uh, Pro Bike uh, Disc Brakes, right? The experts. And these are actually uh, floating rotors. So this is a 203 millimeter rotor. Uh, I love the looks of this thing. And remember, the Hope Hubs are blue. So if we can install these guys today, we'll have a little bit of blue and gold. I believe the handles over there for the levers are actually purple. So be a pretty cool little color combo. Uh, we this have all kinds of colors going on. It's been Mardi Gras up in here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Raxman got him the butt just dropped. Our patron sent us this whole kit, right? Uh, we'll try to find some affiliate links to the uh, in the uh, description below so you guys can check that out. But the rotor's no pretty promises. cool. Um, I'm hoping that we can install this guy today because we've got... Let me scoot those out of the way. We got all this going on here. We've got a whole bunch of different adapters. I'm not sure what the 203 uh, is up front, like how in the hell to install an adapter for the front. So we've got a whole plethora over here. We're gonna be uh, messing with that. Hopefully we can get the uh, the rotors installed, okay? Make this just a clean, sweet video. But if not, we'll do that at a later date. We'll get some adapters that fit. So now, without further ado, let's talk about the Pro Hydraulic Brakes. Okay, now these are super exciting. These are actually the first four piston um, finned calipers that we have got on this channel. And I definitely want to uh, try out a couple of things just a little bit different since our last video because everybody was saying, well, maybe you're having this issue and I want to make sure we check it uh, before we install it. Alrighty. So these are the E4 powered by 3 Pro um, uh, calipers and they look pretty damn sweet. If you guys notice here, um, I'm going to be taking these uh, pads out, but we've actually got some thin pad action there. And if you guys have seen the last episode and all the brake problems we've been having um, up to this point, that I'm really excited about because we need a lot of damn airflow, especially when we go to bed these things. When we test it out, it will be on Hayes Creek, the Black Diamond. Uh, well, you'll bed the men going to Hayes Creek before the uh, Poe Wallace kiss your own ass turn. Absolutely. So make sure you guys uh, don't miss on that, okay? Don't miss out. Now here is the lever. It feels really good. I love the lever design. It does remind me of those Z-Race brakes that we had uh, just installed on Project Cheech. Uh, we've got a little bit of air vents here that's drilled all the way through. Something a little interesting. I'm sure that's aluminum. I mean, they're super light. Um, very light and it looks like the only adjustment that we have on this is actually the reach adjustment something a little bit different I'm not a huge fan of this just because of the looks But um, we can actually screw this in or screw it out to get that lever closer or further away from the bar um, And we're not gonna mess with that at all no. And the reason why is because everybody says as soon as you mess with this which I don't understand why they say hey uh, You will get some air or something in there. I don't know if that's possible or not, but we will not be messing with the um, the reach adjustment Okay, yeah, I don't know if I'm calling BS on it or not 
not, but yeah, just in case. And everybody calls BS, or everybody says that's what it does. So what I want to do, guys, is we've got the front and the rear here. Again, we're not going to be cutting the rear because the rear, um, we want to test out just like it is, okay? I want to unscrew these pads. Let's take a look at these pads, and I want to see if these pistons, all four of them, are actually moving. Uh, we've got a little 3 millimeter hex there to unscrew it, um, as opposed to that cotter pin design. And uh, I've never had a cotter pin fall out. Uh, but I kind of like this uh, little screw action here. Be careful. You said some crap on that last video about the, the hole and the screws and the pins. People, people and all got that. upset. People got upset. Yeah, now one of the most important things, and I don't really think about this. Um, until you lose brakes going down the mountain. I don't really think about it all working together, right? Whoa, let's look at this. I'll follow up on what I'm talking about right now. Look at how big that is. Holy crap. Wow, that is a big pad. Pads, very big pads there. And it's all one piece, super light, something I thought uh, something I thought of was looking at it, right? And we this is the first time we're actually taking them apart. Just looking at it, I thought that the fin was uh, not a part of the pad. I thought the fin was actually built onto the caliper, okay? So what's cool about that is we can actually look at some other um, aftermarket ones in case we lose these guys and they just go completely gone on the, uh, so the, the real-time review. where's the fin attached to? Oh, the fins, it's all one piece. It's the backing. The backing is the fin portion. So it's going to help with the airflow going down into that and cooling it down. So that's pretty cool there. Now, I'm not sure. There's no booklet or anything on there, and Raxman did not let us know um, when he ordered these what they're made out of. So if you guys have any... Well, who knows if Raxman knew? Yeah, I don't know if he knew or not. But uh, he didn't fill us in if he did, Raxman. Uh, but if anybody has any ideas on what these things are made out of, let us know. Uh, but I'm hoping that they last a little bit better than chi did. I, I think it's our job to figure this stuff out. Well, start researching there. I didn't say I'm going to research. I kind of like to go into a blind. Okay. Now, this is a huge port right here for the air to follow through. And we've got the fins that are going to help with all that airflow. So that's pretty neat. This is the front uh, caliper. Now, this is something I want to test out, okay? Do you guys see the two pistons on the left and right side? Right? We've got all four of them. I want to give this a squeeze, okay? And I want to see if those actually all move together. Let's see if we can do this number here. Okay, let's see if they all move together. Not a big squeeze all together. I don't want to go a full pump, but we want to go a little bit. Now, do you guys see them all move? Bam. They're actually all moving. Hey, Dad, that's good news right there. Yeah. We ain't got no stiction, baby. They're all don't, moving. Don't start saying shit. Now, the one that you guys can see in the bottom right is moving as well but it's not moving as much as the other ones and I don't want to pop these guys out. So that is a good sign already right off the bat. So very cool. I wanted to make sure we check that because as I said, it's important. Um, everybody in the Wolf Dick Nation let us know on those comments on the last breaks. They said, man, you, uh, you know, it looks like one of your pads is worn way more than the other, which it was. And they said that could be a stiction problem, you know, the cause of one side working and the other side not. So now that we know that both of these sides are working, that is very good news. Let's take a uh, look at this second set here. Again, this all came as a set, so. Well, he all sent it as a set. You know. Oh, dude. Huh? What? Oh, we're set. What? It's separate. The oh, lever. And the uh, the caliper and the hose is separate. Ah, Just look at that. So we can run an internal. I mean, yeah, okay, we can. But does how? That mean we gotta bleed it then? I know. Well, it should have fluid in there, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna run a little whip through there. I said this a while back. I said the it, the positive when we did brakes like this is if you do have an internal setup, right? You can. They send it to you so you can run it through there, not make a big old mess and have to bleed it and all that. So we're actually going to find out. Does it work? <laughs> So the lever's in there, and very cool. We got some mounting hardware, and we have a barb and an olive. And the lever, guys, does have a little plastic. It's got those rims. Yeah, it's got a little plastic uh, cork in there. Hopefully, they put some fluid in here so we'll have a bunch of air. But let's start with this install. <sighs> okay, now somebody else answered me this. Getting into the mountain bike game, when we first got into it, I was always wanting to find bigger and better, right? Because I always thought bigger was better. Now, when it comes to the rotors, um, obviously, we've got the 203. And the thing I forgot about is the Travail actually comes with the 160 in the rear and the 180 up in the front. But we're going to be doing a 203, so that means we are going to need a larger adapter. And I actually found one. Um, this here did is a... Did the with the 180 in the front? Yeah, it, it oh, did. Yeah. Um, this one here is actually a... It's a PM front and rear 203. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to be using. This is the strangest thing. If you guys have ever had problems finding these damn things and what works on what, let me know in the comments because holy crap, have we run across, have I run across some problems with trying to find the right adapters. And luckily, the Wolf Tick Nation, I've got a whole bunch of them over there, like I think about eight of them, and that's thanks to you guys sending us them. You know what I'm saying? For all of our builds that we have issues with. So we got it finally covered with this guy here. We'll put a uh, affiliate link in the description because this is a huge problem for me. I hate when you say that because sometimes you forget to do it. Well, sometimes we can't find them. Now, the cool thing with the... Uh, Hope Hubs that old Chuck you built out for us. Chuck you. If you guys remember, these are the Hope. I think they're Hope too. Uh, they're they're really nice. They're they're beautiful hubs. Um, they are the Hope Pro Two hubs. Now the very cool thing with these he things. He built that whole wheel set. He built the whole wheel set. Um, we ended up buying these adapters because this. Check it out. You can pull that out. You can switch it between a nine millimeter and a 15 millimeter through axle uh, with boost. So that is just awesome. So Chuck you, one of our patrons, thank you again for that. And they're super, they're stupid smooth. But uh, I love boost? this. Yeah, it's with the boost. Um, well, no, the adapters we bought were boost adapters. Yeah. Yeah, for 15 millimeter. But honestly, um, one thing I do want to say about mechanical brakes, and you guys will all agree with me, especially William Page out there, they, they don't fail. I mean, for the most part, you might have a little bit of stretch. You might not have You'll the get best... you cable stretch. You might, yeah, you might not have the best... Um, it, not just William Page, there's been other people that's been going on talking about, you know, how hydraulic brakes are overrated. Because the bleed process. Are, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's Berserker Nick. Berserker oh, Nick. Man. Yeah. Nothing but issues with uh, his one of his newer yeah, bikes. Some of got. them, but not all of them. But no. same with us is we've had issues with some, but not all. Yeah, um, but what I was getting at is the Travail. One day we rode, um, might be on the brake review video. We did the Travail, the CRX Pro uh, that the old uh, Raxman got him, and the butt just drop sent us. Right, it's got the uh, little switchable um, tension knob on the group set. He sent us that, and what I want to say was funny was I believe I did Project Cheech's real-time review beforehand, and then I got on this bike, and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing, because the brakes worked, you know, and it's funny because you automatically think, well, hydraulic brakes, that's that's the end, that's the end game. Oh, hydraulic brakes, that, that's going to be an upgrade in itself. Not always. Sometimes it's just a well, pain in the ass. Some people are going to say, well, yeah, but you haven't used good hydraulic brakes. So we've had some good hydraulic yeah, brakes. Yeah. The, the MT420s are, are up there. Pretty good brakes. We've got a video on brakes, so you guys need yeah, to watch it. We've got we've done brakes since then. Yeah, we've done brakes since then. But uh, anyway, what I'm getting at is mechanical brakes are sometimes just damn good, you know, because they work. And Wait, I, lo I would love to try some really high-level mechanical brakes or, or even mid-tier mechanical brakes. You know which ones I would like to try huh. are like those, um, and I was thinking about ordering some. I oh, just don't know. Well, that's what I'm getting at. I just don't know if I could bring myself to order them. Magura's, that Magura sells like a hundred and sixty-eight, sixty-five dollar cable actuated hydraulic brake that's got that um, the calipers hydraulic, and then the levers you can just change them out or do whichever ones you want to. I think it's Magura that sells them. Oh, kind of like the HB 100s. Yeah. Uh huh. The, and, it's the cable actuated hydraulics. Yeah, and they're like 180 something dollars, but that's something that we haven't tried yet. Well, we've had that. We've tried the Zoom HV 100s. Yeah, but they're you know those are budget. You know, I mean those were like 40 something dollars at the time when we got them. Yeah, but I mean 100 and something. I think some people would still consider budget. You're talking about full setup for less than 200. Yeah. Well, I mean a, a kit, a set. I mean, but I don't think they come with. I don't think they come with levers. I'm ready for stuff to start going back down in price. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's starting already. And look, the bike. The bike boom during the pandemic is happened, and the parts, and I think things are starting to come back down to realistic levels. I know bike shops are starting to get bikes in again. Walmart's starting to get bikes in again. I mean, the, the, yeah. their shelves are packed now. Which reminds me, is everybody that found us during the pandemic when everything was going uh -huh. crazy. Thank you guys if you're still here watching us. Yeah. Right, we appreciate that. Yeah, thank you.
All right, so what I have done here is I've got my bailing wire, okay? I've got some scotch tape because uh, I don't know where I put the electrical tape. Well, don't use up all the scotch tape. We got Gorilla tape up there. We got wrap presents. Well, Gorilla tape's a little thick. Is a little thick, and what I'm worried about is once we get this uh, bailing wire, it's not pliable. So, and pliable, I believe, means doesn't move well. No, that uh, <laughs> you're all so, over the place with your crap. So I'm gonna kind of wrap it like that. Cause it's thinner up here obviously and that's a tight hole we got to get through i'm just hoping it doesn't come off of there um let's wish me luck i'm gonna be genteel with it okay and we're just gonna pull it up through the top that's that's rough right there folks i'm telling you right, that's rough wolfman talking about falling you out you have a falling out issue yeah i never had a falling out issue in my life okay well, gentle about to have one. Oh, buddy we're just got scotch tape here guys like we're wrapping gifts come on now, it's so tight up here. Oh, no. It's going to rip. Yeah. It's going to rip. Hey, you, you grab Ooh. that. You, you grab. You got, oh, 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 oh. I've got scotch tape. Okay. Well, then go easy now. Don't get in a hurry. Bam. Look at that. Look, look at, at it. That. Just look at it. All right. All right. So, I'm going to put the little rubber covering over it. It's going to cover over the lever. We've got the olive. That's a tight fit. Okay, so the olive is on there. You guys see that? We got the olive on there. And now we're going to take the Phillips out. But before we do, let's take the little plastic keeper out of the brakes. Now, this does look like there's a little bit of excess. Okay, there is some oil. Now, Dad, do you think I should put a couple of drops of some of that finish line in that lever? There's oil in there. Okay, I don't want to pour out. But do you think I should put some in or do you think I should just zip it up the way it's done? I, I, I think you don't add anything to it until we can review it. If you think you can do it where it's going to be effective and not full of air. Yeah. Now we're going to unscrew the Phillips. And this is the part where we're going to have to kind of make some ends meet. Let's hope that a bunch of air don't get in there so we can do a proper review. Okay. So that actually had a little O-ring on there. I like that. On the Phillips. Okay, now. Uh-oh, hang on. I done messed up. I got to put this on there. Almost forgot. I got to put that on there. And then we got to put the olive. All right. Now we are set up. We're going to screw that in. We're going to push that hose in there. Okay. Don't ever have to do this with mechanical. You <laughs> need people all riled up. Yeah. Hey, a little shout out real quick to um bob havens right because he sent us the uh sent us like 20 bucks in coffees uh to buy this uh, open end wrench set for brakes specifically so bob havens still thinking about you buddy every time i reach for one of these wrenches not to be confused with evans yeah so that's tight on there i don't want to go any tighter because it's aluminum okay i'm not going to go any tighter it's aluminum we're going to slip this over all right well before we do actually Let's dry this off, and then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to see if there's any oil that leaks out of here when we do the squeeze, okay? And that's around the caliper, or the uh, rotor back there. All right, we ready? Let's see if there's any fluid. Is it fluid? Er, big squeeze, big squeeze, no fluid. No whammies, no whammies. Hey, no fluid, okay? It's not on the bar. But that feels very, it feels good. It, it does feel good. It doesn't feel squishy. It actually feels like I'm hitting a wall. That's good. Okay. All right. So, we're going to put that sucker on there. Oh, this bike's going to look sweet with all different colors. Woo! All right, guys. What do you think? There is the bike. And uh, it's the Molveil, baby. The Molveil that's almost becoming, it's it's got a little bit of Mardi Gras. It's look. almost becoming a Mardi Gras. Look at that rotor. Is that not awesome or I mean, what? You got the blue with the gold, the purple. And yeah. And I am fingers crossed that we don't get any smoking. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they cool. Yeah, hopefully they cool very quickly with the thin pads, but Racks, man, got me the butt just dropped. Thank you so much for sending us not only the group set on this bike, but the four-pot brakes. Hopefully they work, fingers crossed. I don't know how the brakes are going to do, but we know that that group set's solid, and so is the wheel set. And again, guys, please hit this like, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you ain't part of Wolf Tick Nation. If you guys want to help free. support the channel, you guys can uh, go down in the affiliate links below, all the different tools and uh, parts. Yeah. Most of the stuff that you've seen on today's episode, we'll even throw some stuff that we put on the Travail. We'll put it down there. You guys don't right? have 
have to you don't have to contribute to the channel directly, but if you're gonna do some shopping on Amazon or eBay or something, use some more links, get shopping, and then we'll get a couple dollars out of it and it Absolutely. helps the channel. Yep. Either that you can buy us a cup of coffee if you would like. If you'd That'd like to go directly to the channel. Or if you guys want to see a little bit extra content, all right, Which not, is not for, for everybody. everybody. But um, Wolfman just got done. We had, one of the last episodes on there was uh, smoking. Wolfman smoking some stuff. I, I was smoking meat. Yeah, whatever. Um, you guys can become a patron, um, much like Raxman got in the butt just dropped yes. his. All right, Raxman, thanks again for the breaks, buddy. Guys, we will see you on the next episode. Yeah.